Okay, good morning. <laughs> good morning again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to try something till it works, I suppose. The technology um, is wonderful until it's not. <laughs> exactly right. You what know? are you going to do? It, if I have a soapbox about Facebook for better or worse. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm going to read your bio and then we'll take it from there. So, Rebecca is the co owner of Embani Physiotherapy and Wellness in Pennsylvania. Her clinical practice centers around integrative health, function, and improving client wellness in addition to the rehabilitation of injury after childbirth or illness. She incorporates yoga utilizing medical therapeutic, uta, uh, medical therapeutic <laughs> yoga precepts and principles in her PT patient and client care and teaches community yoga classes offering participants the opportunity to develop a practice that meets their needs despite physical problems that might prevent them from participating fully in a standard lay instruction class. So is there any other information you would like to add to your bio there, Rebecca? Well, actually, I kind of like the Yoda aspect of things, right? That's what we do. Sometimes we're yoga and sometimes a little bit of Yoda. Um, so that, that works. Um, no, you know, I've been a PT for a long time and it's been a real gift to be able to incorporate um, yoga more specifically into my, into my PT practice because um, I think it allows us to be a little bit more creative and to think outside of the traditional rehabilitation um, box, um, so to speak. And also, it, as a physio yoga, it allows us to not just be a yoga therapist as well. I mean, we bring a whole lot of many, many different skill sets into it. And, you know, just by speaking to you, then there's this, this really big community that you can draw from as well. And, you know, we can share knowledge and ideas and sometimes we can vent a little bit, um, but you know, we can, we can share with each other. And I think that it's, it's great. So, so I work with people, you know, men, women, kids, mm -hmm. pelvic floor, pediatrics, as well as adults. Um, and, and then just, you know, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, right? Um, so everything, cause it's the entire body. Yeah. Wonderful. I yeah. totally agree. Uh, yoga has opened I, I was a yoga practitioner for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And I always, I, you know, for me personally, yoga is what, how I, I did physical therapy following a surgery. And I got to about 85%, um, but it was yoga that fully healed my, more than my physical body. Correct. And I always thought it'd be a wonderful conjunction to physical therapy. And but I didn't realize how much till I practiced the traditional physical therapy for a few years out of school. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel completely fulfilled as a therapist. And right. then when I started incorporating yoga, then I was like, oh, now I'm doing much more holistic. It really opened that box of right. the information we know. Like, for example, we know the psoas fibers thread into the diaphragm and how important the breath is. Mm -hmm. But as a physical therapist, you know, are we really teaching breath work often? In the traditional world, I never did, really. Right. I had the tools, I had the knowledge, but for whatever reason, it didn't get out of my mouth to my patients till I was like really submersed in incorporating yoga into my PT practice. <laughs> Well, but you know, think about your practice now and my practice now, you know, we're in this quiet environment where we can actually, we can regulate ourselves mm -hmm. sometimes better than others. I'm not the queen of self-regulation, but I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but that's an important part of what we provide to our, to our clients and to our patients, right? So if somebody comes in to see me and maybe they've been to several other therapists first and they feel broken or they've been told that they've failed physical therapy. Um, yeah. That's a different conversation. That's the therapist that's failed, but they come in and, and if you're, if I'm talking to five different people, if I'm answering the phone, if I am not giving them the, the, the service and the attention that they need and, 
and following through with my breath and taking the time, they, they don't learn how to do it either. So I think that, that by doing this and learning how to do these for ourselves and, and also, you know, at least with myself fully admitting that I don't know what perfect is, yeah. um, but, but I'm certainly not there. And some days I have moments where I feel like ah, I'm there and then my amygdala gets hijacked or something else gets hijacked and off we go again to the races. Right. Those are the things that I think that we can provide to our patients. And, you know, whether it's a new mom, an older mom, kids. I mean, yeah. those, that's real life. That's, that's what we were talking about is taking yoga off the mat, that ability Correct. to take some of these principles into life instead of, you know, running with that amygdala hijack, right? How can you find that sacred pause, tap into the breath? And not that it's going to be perfect in that moment, right. but realizing, oh, okay, I might be in a stress response or feeling anger or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that so you can still make conscious decisions that are in alignment with you instead of just reacting. You know? Correct. You know, one of the words that we use a lot in addition to breath and breathe, I'm not sure how many times I say that each day, but it's habit. You know, what is your habit? And we can have good habits. We can have not so great habits. But every time that we say, oh, I have bad posture or, oh, I can't breathe or, oh, I can't do this, the body goes, okay, I just I, got this message from the brain. You're right. You can't. You know, this is like when your kids say, I don't know how to do algebra. I can't do, I can't do fractions. And so, again, by... By working on these different things and changing the verbiage and changing the words that we use with ourselves as well as with our clients. If I say to my clients, there is no bad posture, my brain starts hearing the same thing and my body starts saying, ah, it's okay to, to be like this for a short period of time as long as I don't live that way. You know, what's, what's the habit? So yeah, it opens up many doors to us. Yeah, good. I love that. Well, tell me a little bit more, uh, what do you uh, feel that in your clinic, uh, what's your area of expertise or what do you really specialize in? Is it um, yoga with a particular uh, subset of pe uh, person or uh, patient? So I guess that my, my, my pa I, I love working with just about everybody, um, but I really feel I have a special interest in bone health. Um, mm -hmm. And then because of my, um, my pelvic floor and core background, I work with a lot of women more than men, but, but men as well, who have um, fear of doing things because of pelvic floor dysfunction, whether it's pain, whether it's leakage, whether it's prolapse, you know, or they've been, and, and then also I work with a number of women with the dreaded mommy belly, or, you know, they've been told they have a diastasis and Google could be a whole nother um, topic and what we find there. So that I work with a lot of these individuals, again, just to bring it back together and to start taking the, the don't out of their life. You know, yes, you can forward bend as long as we learn to articulate. Um, I work with a lot of people with um, knee and hip, you know, with arthritis, um, foot, um, and they've stopped going to classes because they've, because they feel that they can't leave their shoes on. So they're either embarrassed about how their shoes, how their feet look, or they don't have mobility and they need to have that, that shoe to protect it, or they need additional props, blankets, things like this to modify. Um, so, so that's kind of, I, I work with everybody and then we just try to determine what's what's going to help you meet your needs i don't use not all of my clients here's here's a dirty secret so if they're watching now that then now they'll know but not all of my clients know that they're doing yoga because right. maybe they they aren't doing the asana right we're working on asana is only the one the one portion of it the postures and the poses are only the one portion so if i can work with them to start working on the breath and stimulating the vagal nerve starting to get some good signals up into the brain 
getting all of that going, that might be all we need to do to send them out feeling better and walking with more ease. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they know that they're doing yoga. They don't all know that they're doing yoga. Um, <laughs> yeah, I find that as well in my clinic. Yeah. Uh, or they come in with no interest in doing yoga at right. all. They just look at this crazy wall and they're like, <laughs> that looks like a torture chamber. Yes. And, you know, we go about our business and, you know, a few sessions in, all of a sudden they love yoga and they love the yoga wall and they're right. bringing houses. So. <laughs> right. And and I use the wall in a different way because we don't have straps. And so sometimes today we were using the wall, um, kind of combining Feldenkrais in with yoga and getting some weight bearing and some lengthening using the wall. So, you know, my, my students know that sometimes I channel a little bit of Pink Floyd in the wall yeah. or a little, a, a little bit of a, a little bit of the talking heads. Um, we we don't usually use very zen-like mo- uh, music. Sometimes, sometimes we use some opera because we need to soar. Oh, oh that's wonderful. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Uh, well, what does wellness mean to you personally? So I think wellness is trying to get everything not into balance, but that ability to keep working towards something else, you know, to not feel stuck in the moment. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily being healthy. It's it's that ability to work towards change and to to, to kind of keep working towards the, the ultimate potential that you have. Um, and and yeah, finding that balance between the brain and the spirit and the breath and trying to find that optimal functioning um, so that then you can be healthy. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'd written some notes, but my notes are on the other side of the room. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. No, but but it's so much about what we're doing up here and we forget we forget about this and and we we um I think that the words that we use, we make ourselves we we judge ourselves, you know, and that brings down our ability to be well because we think that we can't do enough. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I totally agree. I, I find myself, I, you know, especially with a new patient, I'm, you know, the gateway is typically the physical realm. Okay, mm-hmm. what structure is being injured? Why? You know, what do we need to do to bring into alignment? But truthfully, all that stuff, it sometimes it doesn't matter. What really right. matters is the belief in your own self to heal. Right. And the belief in that pain will go away or your belief in the ability to manage pain because right. it's going to come and go. It's going to be part of life and we have to learn not to freak out about it or doubt ourselves or overdo or all these other things, you know? Right. I use um, uh, the explain pain books quite a oh. lot. And, and in the first explain, I think it's in the explain pain book, they have a map. Mm-hmm. And I will sometimes, so Lorimer and David, I sometimes make copies of that. And I give it to people and ask them to color it and to draw their own map along with it. <clears throat> because it has freak out circle. Mm-hmm. It has all of these, you know, the uh, avoidance, uh, fear, fear and avoidance lake or the sea of endless professionals. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't want to be one of those seas of endless professionals. I want people to come and to know that they can create change. And so, you know, I give them the, the map and I give them a colored pencil or I let them go put it on their refrigerator and throw darts at it to figure out where, where am I today and where do I choose to be? Where, you know, I can't always make the pain go away, but I can, I can make choices about some of the other factors in my life today. Um, oh, I agree about that. That's I created this journal and one of the prompts for the day, it's the same prompts every day, but one of the prompts is, you know, just for a moment, like checking in with yourself and asking yourself, like, what, what do I need today? What do I need to focus on today? Is it body wellness? Is it relationship? Like, what, what do I need today? Right. Love it. Um, well, what's the biggest tip you find yourself giving to clients or, or patients or students? Um, I think it goes along with the, the breathe and the knowledge that they can 
create change that way. And we have anatomy discussions about the vagal nerve and the diaphragm and the gut because I work with a lot of people with GI dysfunction. So that whole brain gut um, analogy. Um, so um, the, the breath and how much the breath can give them during the day that, so they all walk out their first day with at least a little bit to practice. And then really, again, going back to that ability to make choices and to make change that, that, you know, we get so stuck and we don't have to, but we get stuck in, in our own, we get stuck in our head and, and I do too. And so that ability to be able, even if it's like you said, with your journal for just a minute to step outside and to say, can I feel different? Can I be different? It might be scary. And so, you know, we give permission to have that fear and to say, okay, is it scary or is it dangerous? Mm, yes, that's an important fact. Right, yeah. right. You know, it's dangerous. Our body's going to respond the same way. It Correct. doesn't know, you Correct. know? Correct. Um, so I think that that's it. You know, I, I do a lot from a, it's, it's choice and change. Mm -hmm. Choice, like change. change. Yeah choice change sometimes it's change and then choice but we always have choices we just have to remember that we have choices mm -hmm. and and then to not judge if we make a choice you know if we choose to eat Reese's cups instead of a banana mm -hmm. okay you made a choice how do you feel about that don't don't beat yourself up um, unless you eat 10 Reese's cups <laughs> <laughs> or you feel the negative consequences, then you know, like, hmm, maybe that wasn't the best choice, and in the future, I can make this different. Word. There's another C word: choice, change, consequence. Uh huh. Right. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll just start a big blackboard. You know, A, B's, and C. Yes. I love yes. Wonderful. Okay. What? As you know, as a business owner, what's the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome? My head. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a PT and I'm a PT who's been in practice for 36 years. So I'm a product of the old school and, you know, we didn't learn business. So it's been a huge challenge, but a really um, wonderful one to learn business. And even, you know, in the mid fifties, in my mid fifties and now later to, to be learning new things and, and growing. Um, but I still judge myself sometimes by looking back and saying, am I doing enough? Have I seen enough people? Have I done, you know, as PTs, sometimes we equate our um, value with numbers and not with quality. Mm -hmm. And in my practice, you know, I don't see numbers. I see one person at a time unless you come to me for a class. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and as a business owner, I'm running a business and I'm doing marketing and, and things like that that are a fairly foreign concept for me. So sometimes we get stuck in this, am I doing enough? I need to do more, 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 more. And I think as women and as moms, dads may do this too, I don't know. But, you know, we have that sort of thing where we base our identity on how much we've done. Have I cleaned the house? Have I gardened? Have I cooked? No, I sat and read today for an entire afternoon awesome you made a choice you know um but but i still get in my head and um and i and i can drive myself crazy doing that and from an entrepreneurial standpoint i can um waste some time and energy yeah. doing that yeah. I, I think a lot of entre entrepreneurs and business owners mm -hmm. that myself included i find yeah. myself getting caught up in the drama and the doubts yeah and i, and I don't oh, like that but I feel like I am taking action because I'm, you know, my mind is grinding away uh, upon something. And just, it's in my mind. It's a, it's a drain of energy. Correct. But I'm not really having the results that I want. So. Right. I think that that's one of the reasons why I really love teaching my classes. And that, I mean, I've got lots of happy places. But when I'm working with my clients, it truly is a gift because I do get that co-regulation. If I'm saying it to them, I have to take a step back and say, okay, listen to what you just said. Right. Listen to what you just said. Definitely. And it helps. It helps. It doesn't, it doesn't resolve it, but it helps. Um, yeah. So yeah, I like that, that drama 
drama and doubt sort of thing. Um, because we do, we, we doubt ourselves. And as hard as an entrepreneur, you're trying to make a go of it. And our practice was the first one of its sort here in, in Pittsburgh, um, in the Pittsburgh area. Yeah. And so creating change can be gratifying, but it can really be a grind. Um, yeah. You're yeah. Leaving you for others. <laughs> Somebody always makes a path, right? But um, that path can be windy and curvy. So, so that's the challenge. And then I think as always with as physical therapists and, and caregivers that then we need to remember to give care to ourselves. Um, and that's, that kind of leads into your wellness thing because that's hard to care for yourself um, as well as you do for your family. There's always time for other people, but there's not always time for ourselves. And um, it's important to remember to carve that, that out, but it can be another challenge. Yes, it often is. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and you know, my kids are grown, but it still is hard to sometimes pull it in and to take care of ourselves and, and not everybody else. And that leads to my next question is how, how do you incorporate some of that self-care and wellness into your own life, being busy and owning a business? Um, I, I know the things that really ground and root me that, that help from a yoga standpoint to kind of balance my vata, which can get yeah. like this. So I garden. Um, I cook. Yeah. I, I love to cook. I love the creativity of cooking. I love cookbooks. Um, and um, and I read. I read for pleasure. I read for I read for work too. But I need to read a little bit for pleasure because that's a way to bring myself down. Um, and I try to do a daily meditation, even if it's just for two minutes. Um, some days, even that two minutes gets away for, from me. And sometimes it needs to be an active meditation, either on the mat or going for a walk for 15 minutes and doing a mantra of some sort or like a satanama mudra so that I'm really paying attention to that instead of here. Mm -hmm. um, the, I used to think that yoga was just about the physical before I started studying it and then really getting more into the other things. And I thought it was just about the asana. And now I recognize that the asana is, is for me, it can be very satisfying, but it's probably the least of it. For me, I really need to work on the, the breath, the meditative, the, um, the balancing inside instead of just the outside. So that's how I try to do it. Yeah, no, that's great. Figuring out what, uh, what works for you. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with the reading too. I can resonate with that. And for a bit of time, especially as a mom of a toddler, and owning my own business where I'm mm -hmm. always requiring, like I need to learn, you know, PT skills, yoga skills, and then yes. skills. I, uh, for a period of time, took away reading for pleasure. And I was mm -hmm. only reading for business because I felt that's what I should do. Right. I did, and I felt guilty for reading for pleasure. And then, um, you know, I was reminded to bring that back in because that's what refills my cup. That's what grounds me. Right. Um, and I can replenish. And as soon as I brought that back in, like then I started getting more creative ideas and inspiration. Um, so it, it doesn't have to be reading. Each of us has our thing that sometimes we want to do, but we might feel guilty or fearful of doing it. And Correct. That it's perfect for you. Whatever we, that is. We, we forget that we give out but we need to replenish, you know, whether it's your pitcher, whether it's your pie, whether whatever image works for you. And actually when you're talking about reading, you know, with a toddler, my clients frequently laugh because Dr. Seuss books are very therapeutic. They're really wonderful from a standpoint or the pokey puppy, or are you my mother? Because you can't say snort unless you're really using good breath control. Uh -huh. oh. And just like sometimes the lessons are so right on. I was like, oh yeah, I needed to hear that today. Thank you, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> exactly. And, and you laugh. Uh -huh. And even yes. if you laugh for just a minute, you say, okay, you know, I've, I've reached up here a little bit before my, before my itty bitty committee takes over again. Yeah. That's yes. Right. 
Yes. Well, thank you so much for all this information. Are there any parting words of wisdom that you would like to share? Don't judge. No, just just be open to change and to choices and playing with it. I think that we take ourselves too seriously. Um, and that's, I mean, it, it, with those straps behind you, like you said, people walk in and they go, what have I, talking heads, my God, what am I doing here? Um, and, and then they get into things and when we can start laughing at ourselves or with ourselves, not at ourselves, but with ourselves, Mm -hmm. that's really um, empowering and a little bit of laughter goes a long way to lightening the load a little bit. So I'm um, having fun with what we do and exploring yeah. new things. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's it. Yeah. So, um, I'll be posting this on Facebook. Okay. And, um, I'll tag you. And when it comes up, will you leave your website or any contact information where people sure. in your area can get a hold of you? Sure. So in learning more about the yoga trainings that you went through, I attended right. some of those, um, or any yoga-based questions they can reach out to you or I. And um, yeah, and also yeah. Uh, I have the Ignite Wellness community on Facebook, which anyone can be part of. I'll leave that link below as well. So um, right. I'll send you the link and then okay. you can contact information. For I will do so later this afternoon. Thank you so much for doing this, Allison, and for right. taking. <laughs> Taking your time to yeah, do it. You. Well, have yeah. a good day. You also. Bye. Hi, Kurt. Hi,